Okay guys, welcome to another video. In this one I wanna talk about these covered call ETFs that generate super high dividend yields. You know, sometimes you'll see like 8% or more in terms of a dividend payout, which is awesome. I think uh, dividend investors are absolutely attracted to these super high yields. So I really wanna dig into these things. I wanna show you the specifics of how they work. And I wanna tell you whether they are a good or a bad investment in certain circumstances. I've got all kinds of numbers to show you. I think you're gonna be really surprised by the results here. Okay, so basically what these things are is they are a typical ETF like you'd expect. They hold a basket of underlying stocks according to some kind of defined strategy. In this case, they typically hold uh, dividend aristocrats or dividend kings, which are these big, strong, stable companies with a nice long history of dividend payouts. And then what they do is they generate additional income from that portfolio of stocks by selling covered call options. And so when you sell a call against a stock that you already own, you get dividend premium uh, from the sale of that underlying call. And so then that's what they're using to juice the returns in the ETF is that extra income from writing the covered calls. Now, uh, after they write that call, if the underlying stocks that they're holding, you know, stay mostly sideways or trend down a little bit, it's the best of both worlds because they get to keep all of that premium income, plus they get to keep the stocks that they're holding and the dividend income that's generated from those stocks. The only real downside with that particular strategy is in a very strong bull market run, the uh, stock may get called away. And that's really how a call option works. It gives the holder the option to call the stock away at an advantageous price to them. And so it has the effect of sort of capping the maximum gain that the ETF can recognize in a bull market. But on the downside, it sort of insulates you from a market shock as well because you have that premium income to offset any loss. So the net effect is sort of a compression of volatility in the underlying uh, ETF that you're holding, plus you're raking in this additional income. So when you put those two things together, it's a really attractive story for a dividend investor that's looking for yield, right? Because they don't tend to care so much about price. You're really focused on income, so the price fluctuations don't matter as much, uh, either on the downside or on the upside. You're really looking at current income, which is getting juiced by the covered call options, and you're looking at a nice fat yield. Uh, ZWC is yielding 8% right now, which is super attractive. However, I want to show you why this focus on yield is potentially flawed thinking from the standpoint of total returns and dividend growth. So let me explain how all of that works. So in order to get into this, I want to show you the dividend history in terms of the payout for one of these covered call ETFs. ZWC is the example I'm using. So I've logged on here to uh, Portfolio123. This is my favorite analysis platform for stocks, ETFs, all kinds of things. I'll put a link down in the description. Highly recommend this thing. Um, you know, sign up for the free trial and check it out. It's awesome. Uh, so what I've done here is I've pulled up ZWC and the price history is here, but it also shows me the dividend history over time. And so this one is a monthly payer. And right now you're getting 11 cents a share in terms of dividend. That's where that 8% yield is coming from. And we have data on this guy going all the way back to 2017. So not quite four years. And the payout has been mostly the same. So it started off at 10 cents and somewhere here in 2019 and started paying 11 cents. So, you know, the, the payout has been high, but it hasn't been growing. Okay. So we don't have a lot of history on this thing. Like I said, it's only about four years. But BMO has a similar ETF called ZDV. And so it's, it's basically the same sort of fund, except that they don't do this covered call writing thing for extra income. So I want to take a look here at the dividend history for ZDV. He yields about 5.1%, I think it is. And uh, so that amounts to a $0.07 cent payout per month per share. And so if we look at the dividend history on this guy, and we scroll back in time here, we're seeing the same numbers, $0.06. Cents. Seven cents, six. So we started out at six cents, fluctuated a tiny bit, and today we're getting paid seven cents. And so I've actually done the math on this one. So over this is about a nine year history we have on ZDV. If we calculate the year over year increase in that dividend payment for this particular fund, uh, we get uh, a year over year increase number of 1.73%. That's the raise that you get each year for holding this guy and getting that dividend income. 
And so if you're familiar with inflation at all, you'll see right away that that actually doesn't compare very well, even with inflation. You know, inflation typically runs just under 2%, maybe 1.9, something like that. Um, if you inflation adjust the increase that you're getting in that payment, it's only barely keeping pace with inflation. And so basically I'm showing you that increase in ZDV because I think we can safely assume we're going to see a similar increase in ZWC, the covered call ETF, over the same time frame because the only source of dividend increase is the stocks that they're holding, and they're both holding mostly the same basket of stocks, right? So I think we can safely assume we're gonna keep seeing the same amount of increase in the next decade uh, for both of these funds, but with a higher amount of income, 8% for ZWC. Okay, so let's think about that now. We're, we're getting a high current yield, but no increase. So now let's compare to holding a basket of stocks that are similar to what the ETF would have held. So you can also do this in Portfolio 123. You can back test. Um, holding a, a particular basket of stocks according to some kind of strategy. You can see what your return was over time. So I did this. I extracted the top 10 holdings on average over time for these two funds, and I put them into a simulation, ran it over a nine-year period, and I downloaded all of the individual dividend payment transactions into Excel. And you can see them all here, all these individual payouts. I went back over this um, you know, nine or 10 year period and I calculated the total income that I would have been able to generate by holding these individual stocks, 10 of them at a time, uh, over this period. So in the first year, in the first full year of data, which was 2012, I would have gotten 4,200 bucks. The next year, 4,700 and so on. It kept increasing. So in the first year, I actually got a raise, an increase of 12% in my dividend payout from 4,200 to 4,700. Next year was 18, then 17, right? So if I average this column to give myself a, an average year over year raise, it comes out to 14%. So this is a big number, right? I mean, your typical salary increase is what? Like 5% if you're lucky, 2% if you're not. So the amount of uh, increase to your paycheck in retirement, if you're you know, a retired dividend investor, is pretty significant, right? It keeps increasing year over year by a heck of a lot more than inflation. So you're actually getting richer in your retirement. Now that we have that increased number, let's compare it to uh, the bigger initial yield, but a smaller increase in a fund like ZWC. So in the second tab of this spreadsheet, I've done this. And uh, so imagine you have $100,000 in capital to invest. If you were to go out today and buy this basket of stocks, the average yield that they're paying is only 4.9%. Uh, so somebody that's a fan of ZWC will say, oh, well, there you go, right? Uh, I can make 8%. Why would I buy a basket of stocks that are only going to pay me 49 And of course, the answer is in the year-over-year -year increase, right? So um, if I did this 100 grand at 4.9, this is what I make in year one, and then go forward, it starts going up, right? And in year 10, I'm making about $16,000 a year. So if we compare this with someone holding ZWC instead of the basket of stocks, they're getting a much bigger yield in year one, but with a smaller increase. And so in year one, they're getting eight grand and then it starts to go up. And so here's the difference between these two. So you can see that in year one, there's a pretty strong advantage. If you're holding ZWC, you're gonna be laughing at this guy that bought a basket of stocks. Um, but then you kind of stop laughing around year five or six because you're, you've now lost that advantage. So go forward. Uh, into the future, you're actually going to be making significantly less money. And you can see that here in year 10, this guy's making 16 grand while you're pulling in about 9,500. Now, what I did here is I summed up the total amount that you got over this decade or that you would get over this decade in today's dollars, non-inflation adjusted. Um, our stock investor made 94.7 and our ETF investor made 87.5. So you know, not bad, like it's it's only a little bit less than you would have bought in the basket of stocks. And certainly in the early years, you were winning. Uh, but if you were to project this out over another decade, I think you can see what's going to happen, right? The stock investor is going to become a, a lot richer and the ETF investor, not so much. And so just for fun, I compared this to ZDV, which is yielding about 5.1% assume the same increase. I made it 2% instead of 1.73, just to make it a little bit easier. And you can see their income year over year. Again, similar story. They start losing out to this basket of stockholder uh, quicker, you know, because uh, they started off with less of an advantage. And over the total decade, um, this investor can expect to pull in 5,600. So just compared with the non-covered call ETF, you can see that over a decade, it certainly is better to go with ZWC over ZDV. 
um, because you're going to pull in that additional income. And ZDV is still not showing a, a, a different increase than this guy. Um, but really the difference here is in this basket of stocks. Okay, now all of that is really just focused on yield, right? So, and I think this is the picture that a dividend oriented investor would look at. They would look at the amount of yield you could get. It sort of totally disregards uh, price appreciation in both the basket of stocks and the ETF. It sort of assumes that uh, that doesn't matter. But of course it, it does matter, right? I think you can't discount that entirely. Uh, so here's the results actually from the simulation that I ran on the basket of stocks. So you can see over this period, which is the amount of time I have data for ZDV, uh, my average annualized return on this basket of stocks was 10.79%, which uh, actually beat the broad index. So uh, the benchmark I'm using here is um, uh, the Canadian market, the TSX, uh, and it only returned 95% over this nine year period, whereas this basket returned 151% for that annualized 10.79. And the max drawdown was similar to the broad market, right? So these stocks did well, right? They, they beat their broad index. They returned um, you know, significant dividend income, but they also returned significant price appreciation. So I had a nice total return number from this guy. Now, imagine we had bought ZDV over the same period. Let's take a look at the total return picture. So you know, this is again, assuming that you're reinvesting these dividends, you're recognizing compound growth, both in the stocks and the ETF scenario. And in here, you can see some of the difference. I did not beat the market by holding ZDV. Uh, I actually had a slightly bigger max drawdown and my annualized return uh, over this time period was an average of 5.61%. Uh, so about half what I could have made in terms of total return uh, from having bought the basket of stocks. So over here on this tab, I ran a simulation for ZWC and I don't have as much data for this guy. So I was only able to run him uh, from inception onwards, but from that shorter time period, just under four years, he returned an average return of 1.54. Okay, so I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this, right? And I think you can probably tell by this point that I'm actually a little bit sour on these ETFs as an investment. And you're right, I, I'm kind of bearish on these things because I don't like the total return picture and I don't like the dividend growth picture go forward. So in terms of the bear case for these guys, I think that's where it lies, right? It lies in a very weak total return scenario. Um, these things have fees associated with them. Uh, you actually pay about double the amount of fees in ZWC that you do in ZDV because they're a more actively managed fund. Um, so you're actually paying more for less performance. Uh, I don't like that. And you know, because of that dividend growth difference, you know, I'm trying to project it into the future and I'm thinking, well, I, I don't really want the same number into the future. I want a growing bigger number. So is there a bull case for these things? So there is, and I think it is, um, a, a bullish scenario for a very specific investor. And I think, um, you know, you have to understand that for a lot of people, uh, a dollar today is worth a heck of a lot more than a dollar tomorrow. And so this idea of getting that um, bigger payout in the early years, I think is attractive to somebody that is later on in their investing time horizon, they're very close to retirement or they're already in retirement. And at that point, you sort of tend to prioritize current income and additional growth is not as important to you as lower volatility and more money in your bank account today. So this shifting focus away from growth and towards current income is totally valuable valid for somebody that is in that scenario. But even in that scenario, you do have to think about that next 10 years. I mean, you know, if you expect to be around for another 10 to 20 years, uh, do you want to be richer or do you want to have that more modest uh, return? Uh, so there's another point to be made for the bull case in favor of any of these covered call ETFs. Um, and it has to do with taxation. So if you're a taxable investor, uh, these things are actually very, very nice. So I've pulled up the uh, tax statement for 2019 for ZWC. And so this sort of breaks down the different categories that you've gotten in terms of that dividend. So uh, they're saying the total distribution was $1.31. Uh, and of that, um, 64 cents was eligible dividends, which is taxed quite nicely, right? You get this nice eligible dividend tax credit. So this is taxed at a fairly low rate already. But the really, really nice thing is this return of capital number. So, uh, you know, roughly half of this thing is return of capital. The way return of capital works is that it that portion of the distribution is completely tax free until you eventually sell this thing. 
right? So if you hold it for a very, very long time, this results in a tax deferral. Yes, you'll, you'll have to pay tax on that, basically that capital gain when you do eventually sell this thing. But until then, that's totally tax-free money and it can compound on a tax-free basis. So very, very attractive to somebody that's investing in a taxable account. And really, I think the other bullish point from this thing comes from these folks that never intend to sell this thing, literally until the day that they die. So if that's your intent, and if you totally are absolutely sure that you're never going to sell this thing, you're investing in a taxable account, you can essentially defer that tax forever, right? And so this now gives you a very sizable advantage over having held those dividend stocks, which are going to force you to pay tax on those eligible dividend income amounts every single year, which produces a tax drag on the account. So I didn't do the simulation on this from a tax standpoint, but if you did, um, that uh, disadvantage that ZWC is at uh, compared to the basket of stocks would have narrowed in a taxable account. Still better to have invested in the stocks for most people, uh, but in very certain circumstances for taxable investors in a very high marginal tax bracket, uh, you start to see that the uh, difference is narrow and ZWC doesn't look so bad for folks in that very specific circumstance. But that said, if you, take, if you think about somebody on the other end of that investing uh, time horizon, somebody that's younger, uh, that is just beginning their investing career, uh, I really don't think this thing is appropriate at all because you're sacrificing a ton of growth in exchange for money today, which is kind of the opposite of what somebody needs to do when they're young, right? You really need, I think, to prioritize growth in your early years and then slowly make that shift later on over to current income. But I think this uh, heavy focus on current dividend income income, while it's attractive, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot in terms of the amount of money you could be making uh, by focusing on growth in the early years in your portfolio and then only making that shift later. So I think you have to be very, very careful with these things if you're a younger person. So guys, I hope this helps you understand this. Uh, let me know in the comments if it makes sense. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to respond. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Definitely give the video a like. It really helps me out. Ring the bell and I will see you on the next one.